Hi, I'm Mark Moon from Washington University, and we're here at the AATS meeting, 99th annual meeting in Toronto, and we're part of CTSNet. Uh, today we're going to talk about wellness and cardiothoracic surgery. Is it a fact or is it fiction? Wellness really is sort of the holistic approach to a state of health, the well-being. There's five domains, the physical domain, mental domain, social, and there's lifestyle. And we're going to discuss those different uh, domains and how we can achieve potentially wellness and come up with some potential plans. So what I'd like to do is start by uh, having the panel introduce themselves. I've put together a steam panel of people who have been varying levels of wellness throughout their careers, admittedly. And uh, <laughs> let's start down at the end with Dr. Jones. Yes, uh, David Jones, uh, thoracic surgery from Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York City. I'm Stephanie Chang. I'm a chief resident at Washington University, and I'll be starting at NYU in thoracic in a couple months. I'm Alec Patterson. I'm a thoracic surgeon from Washington University in St. Louis and uh, editor of the Annals of Thoracic Surgery. Okay. Uh, Gilles Dreyfus. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon uh, in Paris, France. Excellent. So panel, when, they're, when you're trying to achieve professional growth, we really can't forget about personal growth, but I'll be the first to admit it's very difficult to find a balance between the two. And I think it's uh, kind of a focus on wellness and from time to time surgeons have trouble taking good care of themselves, their minds, their bodies, and they can get a little prickly from time to time with uh, social interactions. And Let's start with Dr. Patterson. You've been a, sort of a champion of professionalism in our specialty over the years. And do you think that relates to wellness? Is that a part of wellness, and does that help surgeons mentally? Yeah, I think it surely does. I, in, in this era, we really need to focus on being professional, being empathetic uh, to our situation, uh, self-aware. Uh, and I think the control that that requires definitely translates into a better state of wellness, as you described it. So I think it's critically important. That's good. And you know, I agree with you completely that it's, it works on the mind, I think. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Dreyfus, you, um, the, the, the French and, and all over Europe have gone to a, sort of a policy of decreasing and limiting work hours for the, the residents and trainees and, and in some cases the attending surgeons. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's, that adds to the wellness of the surgeons? And, and is, that, it, is that good for them ultimately and is it ultimately good for our patients? Well, unfortunately, I haven't known this period, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've been trained <laughs> as every surgeon and had a professional life, which was, I would say, similar to what you have in the United States. Now, as far as the rules, I've, I've seen the, the, the juniors uh, coming into this uh, sort of uh, uh, working hour scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's... It probably is good. It's, it's very difficult to understand how these people with uh, less time will get better doctors, or mm -hmm. whether you're pushing uh, further in their, car in their career, uh, the, the time they will become uh, autonomous and, and, and self-sufficient professionals. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult balance. I'm not sure that cutting the time is going to make them happier. But now it's, it's a fact. We cannot go right. backwards. Right. So what I wonder is, you know, we, some of us worked a 110-hour work week, so that 110th hour was difficult. Now in the United States it's 80 hours, so that 80th hour is difficult. So if you work a 35 or 40 hour no, week, no. is that 40th hour difficult? No, 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 no. no. no nobody works the, uh, in Europe. Nobody follows the, the regular working rules of any employees. However, I was in the UK for 10 years uh, in, in London, and I found it extremely odd you know, that the juniors had to leave the hospital and couldn't come before the next day if they had been on all night. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, and, and there was nobody to replace them. Mm -hmm. and, and because you know, all these rules, social rules, uh, have never, nobody has thought how to implement those who were sent home because they had worked too much. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, you can't decide all of a sudden that you rest. This is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so, it is very difficult. Is it part of wellness? I, I cannot, I don't, I don't have mm -hmm. the answer. Right. Truly. We may not get an answer today. That's where we're heading right now. <laughs> now, uh, Stephanie, uh, it was a couple of years ago, uh, Bruce Lido was the president of the ATS, and in his presidential address, he said, cardiothoracic surgery is hard. If it wasn't hard, anyone would do it. 
How are you looking forward to the next 30 years of your career in something that's very stressful because it's very hard? Is there any way you're going to be able to deal with that looking forward? Does mindfulness play a role? There's been a lot of talk about mindfulness. Right? Um, I hope I do okay the next 30 years, but um, I, I don't know necessarily about mindfulness, but the, the one thing that I will, that I've kind of kept in mind throughout residency and fellowship and will continue to do is at the end, of, at the end of the day, if you don't take care of yourself outside of the hospital, you're never going to be able to deal with all the stresses in it. And so like I know people, I do know people that have become yoga instructors in the side, and that's not what I'll be doing. But um, you just have to find what's important and make sure you still, you still focus on your family and your friends and all those other activities. And I think that's really the only way to keep yourself sane. Yeah, the work-life balance. Dr. Patterson, how did you maintain work-life balance? With a d degree of flexibility that that uh, uh, you know, my wife is a academic surgeon, a very busy person. She actually became a yoga instructor and, and, did, and did so. To, uh, she was having trouble with stress at work and uh, uh, her relationships at work. And, and, and the, the yoga was a transformational experience for her. So I completely agree with Stephanie. But I think you've, you've got, to, in, in doing what we do, uh, you've got to maintain a flexible, a flexible attitude about work-life balance, I think. Right. Dr. Jones, uh, David, when we were residents at the same era, it was uh, eat when you can, sleep when you can, and don't mess with the pancreas, to paraphrase. The, um, uh, that led to a lot of poor eating habits, poor sleeping habits. We walked around like zombies most of the time. I mean, is that the way it should be, or how, how, how do you think... You got any advice for the trainees and young faculty mm -hmm. in the future to avoid that type of existence? Well, I, th I think it was like that. Uh, it was a different era for sure. I think as you move from being in a, uh, a trainee and you're moving into young faculty, and then as you move up, you're going to have to have some, some life skills that, that we weren't necessarily taught. In fact, we didn't even hear about them. And I think one of the things that we talked about um, two days ago at the 11th Leadership Academy of the ATS was time management. So I think for me personally, if I can manage my time and manage my day, I have a lot less stress and I'm a lot happier. And I think the other thing that, that uh, is, is different about today is that um, we talk a lot more about teams. And I think that being a part of a team, delegating, giving others responsibility, that takes away, again, some of the stress that you have to do it all and you're gonna skip meals, you're gonna not go to doctor's appointments, and you're not gonna do things like that. I meet with the residents every couple weeks and we talk about things that have nothing to do with, with, uh, with surgery. And I ask them, um, how many of you have been to see your, your physician in the last year? Steph may have actually been there when, I, when, when as she rotated through Memorial. So there was about 11 in the room. One had been to see their local physician uh, in the past year. So I think even though it's you and I, I think it was days of old, still they're working very hard and they aren't always taking care of themselves. But I do think the time management teams and delegating good strategies. Yeah. What about diet? What about what you eat? Now, Stephanie, do you just go down to the cafeteria whenever you can <laughs> at a case? or? Uh, uh, I, you... I have the worst eating habits out of anyone known to man. <laughs> I eat, like, donuts for breakfast and chili cheese fries in between cases. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I'm going to have to... You're not to... the person to ask. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to pass on a little diet advice to you. Yeah. Me. Omega-3 fatty acids mm -hmm. and some tuna, maybe a salmon. Mm -hmm. Dr. Patterson, like, when you go home at night after a stressful day at work, how do you unwind? Is that something you share uh, with your wife? Yeah, we talk about a lot about what uh, share concerns and, and uh, stresses. I, I think it helps a lot to talk uh, to talk things through. Susan and I have been married for 46 years, and you know she's my best friend, so I, I share all kinds of information, and I think that does help. Mm -hmm. uh, I also enjoy cooking, so I'm the cook in our house, so that gives me something to do every night when I go home. Perfect. That's, that's good. Yeah. Perfect. And your son's a, a very accomplished chef as he well. He is indeed. He is yeah. indeed, yeah. Jill, so you, you traveled the world a lot. You're, mm -hmm. you're a very uh, international uh, surgeon. 
uh, very well respected and, and people like to hear you and have you at meetings like this meeting and, and, and your wife is very, very accomplished as well. It, so you must spend a little bit of time apart and how do, do you maintain sort of a, the togetherness and do you share, you know, adventures along the way? Yeah, yeah, very much so because uh, I, I, I sort of, you know, cut when I came out of the hospital, I try to have, it's another life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I, I talk about other things. I, uh, she loves uh, cinema, mm -hmm. uh, so we watch a lot of movies. Uh, I try reading because I, I really have to have my mind, which is uh, working on something else. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it is sometimes difficult. The best time are holidays. Mm -hmm. I try to read four or five books during holidays. Uh, because I need that in, intellectually. I read the news, I read the newspapers, I like to be informed. As far as uh, physical activity, it, it really, it, there are ups and downs. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to maintain that because, you know, when you come out at close to midnight, you're exhausted and you really don't feel like putting your shoes and go running or, or, and I don't like that. I find it a waste of time. So, and uh, when you start aging also, you have to take be careful about your food habits. Mm -hmm. I think it's even more important than uh, doing sports. Yeah, but it's it's very difficult because you know you were talking about stress, and I think that the uh, the more you accomplish, uh, the the less you have stress. So it, it's it's a very difficult mm -hmm. balance between uh, what you do, how much you work, and and how much you're able to achieve because achievements are rewarding. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the stress doesn't come from achievement. The stress comes from frustration and things that don't happen. And, uh, and it, it's, it's a very difficult balance. And I would not <coughs> say that if someone wants to work more hours, he's, uh, he's always very stressed. I don't think it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there is some, if you have a whole night up, you probably need to, 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 to recuperate. And uh, when you see the pilots, they have very strict rules. Mm -hmm. After 12 hours, they can't fly, and they need to stay on ground for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. um, so, perhaps we've lived with an example which is not the best. Probably not. <laughs> and so that example that has not been the best sometimes leads to a distressed physician. Uh, Dr. Jones, Dr. Patterson, you both have been leaders of big divisions. What, any advice on how you would how you would advise people that maybe are on the edge, or approaching the edge? Well, I think one of the ways to try to, what you want to do is avoid getting into that situation. And I think one of the things I, I have trouble doing myself is, is modeling always the best behavior because I'm, you're, you're working hard, you're pushing, you're pushing, and I'm not sure that's the best model all the time. But when you do get, begin to get a sense that, that somebody is, is, is becoming unhealthy, I think you really have to hopefully have a relationship with them where you can sit down and, and, and talk about it and tell them what resources are there, uh, because there are, there are plenty within the institution and outside of the institution. And if it's a resident, it's amazing um, how much they confide in their co-residents as well. And so that maybe there's an opportunity there for some support. Right. Yeah, I think if you if you have a if you're a division or your group, your team, your department, however it's configured, if that's a safe environment, if there's psychological safety within that, you know, if people feel free to, to speak up and, and to address a problem like that, and I think coaching is a uh, is a very underutilized strategy. Um, I'd be interested to know how many, how many, uh, how many uh, faculty in, in your group, David, have got a, a coach. Uh, but yet, you know, the, the CEO of our healthcare system, the CEO of our hospital, the uh, the the guy who runs our uh, operating room environment, all these guys working for that big healthcare organization, they all have coaches. Mm -hmm. And how many of us do? Uh, so I do think it's an in. Um, inadequately utilized resource. Well, that's something I think we need to spread and sort of encourage people to do. Mm -hmm. I think it's very beneficial. Self-care is not selfish. You can't serve from an empty vessel. So I'd like to thank the whole panel for being here today. And uh, I don't think we answered the, que the question of how are we going to create wellness, but 
at least we got the conversation started. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you.